Okay, so continuing uh, part three of uh, chapter number seven, we now come to the part of online working from home. So, what are the benefits to employees of working from home? Okay, so one thing is reduced stress caused by traffic and public transport delays and over uh, overcrowded transport. Okay, so when employees are working from home, they do not have to deal with any transport problems. So, reduced amount of stress. Next is they save money on their transport when they work at home, no transport, so they are saving money on transport. Then some people might feel as though they are contributing towards the environment because since they do not use transport, they will not be they will not be going in vehicles that are tra that are emitting any poisonous gases and all that. Okay, so it might make some people feel as though they are helping the environment. Then uh, this is uh, something else you can spend more time working or resting because when you work at home you decide the time you decide when to work I mean what time to work how many hours to work okay so you decide the timing so you can spend more time working or more time resting depending on what you prefer okay and you can also work at a time that suits you okay morning evening afternoon whatever time is comfortable for you convenient for you you can work at a time then you can work in a comfortable environment, okay? So when you're working now, some people may not prefer the office environment, may not prefer the office setup. But there are some who might prefer the home environment, working in their, in, a, in, in their own bedroom or working in the hall or, for example, some might prefer working in the kitchen, okay? So you can work in an environment that is comfortable for you, okay? Then you can also organize work around social or family commitments. So. If you do have to, for example, there are certain adults, they have to pick up the kids from school, okay, bring them back home and again take them for classes, okay, so if you do have family commitments to attend to and if you are working from home, you can always arrange your family commitments around your work life or rather you can say arrange your work life around your family commitments, okay, so these are a few of the benefits to employees of working from home okay so you do have one i mean you have about two to three by heart okay because this is a kind of a question that comes almost in every past paper okay benefits of employees working from home or they ask benefits to organizations of having employees working from home okay then if you look at the benefits to organizations they can attract a talented motivated workforce they can employ people who are located anywhere because they do not need to they do not need to travel that is true since you are employing people from since your employees are working from home you do, you, know, you do not have to hire people in your country you can have hire people from different parts of the world to work for you because all of them are working from home then you do not have to spend or you do not have to buy or rent office space or furniture for employees all of them are working from home then certain workers may work more effectively while they are working from home okay then moving on to our next part what are our drawbacks okay so when employees work from home what are the drawbacks that they face so problem number one that they face is they might be distracted at home because of family and leisure activities and all that okay so when employees work at home they might be distracted by their kids or by their the noise that is being made at home okay then they may suffer from a lack of social interaction with colleagues okay so since they are all working at home they are not going to be interacting with any of their colleagues okay they are not going to feel like they are working in a team okay? each of them are working on their own laptops from home the team building feeling may not be there then they may also feel disconnected from the company then drawbacks to the organization is one is they have to worry about the company data Okay, so there is a data security problem. Okay, employees are handling their data from home, so there is always a data security problem. Then it might be more difficult to manage and support employees who are not in the office. Employees working at home might not work as hard as they would if they were in the office. And then it can be complicated to organize payments and permissions for workers in different countries. So, for example, a Sri Lankan company having an employee working in the UK, when it comes to arranging payments and all, the currencies are different times are different okay so there might be issues when it comes to payment and all that okay so these are drawbacks to organizations of having employees working from home so you once again please do have two to three points by heart at this okay uh, the next thing is what we are going to talk about is impact of the internet on organizations how have organizations been affected because of the internet so there are some good things there are some bad things one of the good things is improve the communication okay so organizations can communicate and interact with their customers and employees more easily and in real time using email instant messaging and social media nowadays almost all companies 
are using social media to interact with their customers and customers actually prefer social media a lot more than you know actually going to the organization and uh, talking to an employee there okay so communication has definitely improved because of the internet then next is access to global markets so organizations can now advertise and sell to customers in countries around the world now, a company in sri lanka is no longer limited to selling only to sri lanka now because of the internet they can sell to people sell, sell items to people in china in us in russia whatever country they want they can sell because of the internet okay because internet is something which is worldwide across the entire world okay the internet has also ensured that manufacturers have easy access to businesses that produce materials and parts and can communicate more easily with them okay so a company in sri lanka wants a particular material or wants a particular good okay it's not available in sri lanka no problems they can always get down the material from another country using the internet they can find a place that sells that particular good that they are looking for and then using the internet itself they can pay, uh, place an order and then using the internet itself they can track the order uh, until it is delivered uh, to them okay so another positive thing is access to global markets okay so one is organizations can sell to the entire world and the second is they can also get goods from all around the world okay then access to global workforce okay now since because of the internet you can have employees working from home which means that companies can hire employees from any part of the world so they have basically access to a global workforce they can have employees working from many parts of the world they can have employees from many parts of the world okay <clears throat> look at one benefit here the organization may also be able to reduce its cost because people in some countries will accept lower wages or lower salaries than in other countries okay so this is something positive to organization okay moving on something else is how information is managed and used okay organization can make use of big data so because of the internet they have access to big data to understand the behavior of their customers improve the customer experience and make their processes more efficient okay so an example is given here a computer game retailer could use data gathered from analyzing social media posts web browsing patterns movie ratings and current game sales in order to predict which game will sell best in 6 months time okay so because of the internet organizations have access to what we call big data using big data they can basically start to understand what customers are interested in they can even predict what customers will be interested in in a few days and they can accordingly prepare them selves okay but then there is also something which is negative which is something which we call security issue and this is a problem that is there with anything that happens online okay anything that happens online always has a security issue okay so the data stored by organization is often private and valuable if data is stored in a central location it can be physically secured by walls locks alarms and security guards okay none of these methods is totally safe but they are all good ways of securing data okay so putting walls locks alarms and security guards to protect your data is a good method but it does not 100% protect you okay it's a good method but doesn't totally protect you to a certain extent only it protects you okay so when employees access company data from home they will have to the following three methods should be followed okay so the company allow allowing employees to transfer copy of the organization's data to home via email so when employees are going to be working from home they can send the company's data to their to their email sorry uh, allowing employees to transfer copy of the organization's data to home via email so basically the company data can be what do you call sent to the employee's email so the employee can work from home itself okay then another method is providing remote access to the data stored in the organization's building such as by using a vpn so we know vpn is a virtual private network so what they can do is they can tell employee you can work from home you can access our network but when accessing our network always make sure you use a vpn so that nobody else can see your network okay so even if you access your network nobody can see that you are accessing that network because you are using vpn your network becomes hidden 
another method is storing data on another company's server and providing access to that data to so certain companies their server computers are not secure enough so what they can do is they can store their information on another company which has much higher security on their server computers okay and then they can tell the employees access this particular company's server in order to access our information okay so there are three main ways in which unauthorized users can gain access to systems okay so we are going to look at three ways that unauthorized users can get access to data so one is authorized users can reveal their login details either intentionally or unintentionally okay another method is unauthorized users can intercept the data intercept the data means while the data is going from one computer to another computer they can get into the middle and get hold of the data okay and the third method is they simply try and hack into the system okay so what we have gone through so far is what we call a negative issue okay security issues i told you is always there with anything that is on the internet anything on the internet will always have a security issue so over here we saw three methods that companies can follow to make sure that the employees have a secure connection to company information and over here we saw there are these are three methods that companies can use oh, sorry these are three methods that unauthorized users can use to break into company information okay so uh, there is also one more negative thing which is which we call greater competition okay so when you use, use the internet to sell your goods you are now dealing with the entire world okay a company which is using the internet to sell its goods is now competing with stores across the entire world okay so the competition has increased you are dealing with a much greater competition okay so with the use of internet for conducting businesses organizations must now compete in a global marketplace okay so these are a few examples that they have given you where the competition has increased okay i'll just take one postal services have been negatively affected by people's ability to send messages and digital media instantly okay so nowadays you can see the postal services are hardly used because nowadays people prefer using email much more instant messaging much more video conferencing much more uh, sending a letter using the postal service is not that very popular okay so in our next video uh, we'll be going through a few of the past paper questions